right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. It's from a guy. He's 34 years old, a lifelong bachelor, never been married. And he's going to share his story of how when he was 19 years old, he had his major red pill awakening moment with a girl that he thought he was in love with. Like many guys, he thought she was the one, all that, and he was the nice guy, put her on the pedestal, treated her like the queen, the center of his universe, all that, all to find out that she had three other boyfriends and was using him. He was really hurt, and that was his big moment, that he saw things as they really are. And obviously, throughout college, seeing the carousel riding, all that, completely changed his view on everything and since then has lived the uh, bachelor life he does very well for himself good money comfortable has all the fun toys but you see guys he, all his knowledge will help him down the road because you're going to see that he has a woman he's been seeing casually for a couple of years and you're going to see here that even though it's been uh 15 years since he had that big rp awakening female nature doesn't change and you're going to see here how he handles this whole situation with this girl and her friend when she tries to get something more out of him, etc., etc. It's a good story here for all you guys. And also, you're going to see he has the life. The type of life I think a lot of you guys would like to have as a bachelor. And, and it's uh, not that hard to attain once you learn these things and work on yourself. Because he puts himself first. And he learned that lesson early on. So, starts off, he says, uh, hello SSM. I love your channel and have been excitedly waiting for you to open up your merchandise store. Well, that's coming in a few weeks, guys. I was on the fence with sharing my story, but my best friend thought it might help some other guys out, out so I decided to send it in. I'm like a lot of guys that had to learn the lessons you teach the hard way. But I'm glad that channels like yours exist so some of the younger guys will have a fighting chance. Yeah, bro, guy, guys like you, guys like me, we didn't have YouTube back then. We had to learn the hard way. It's just uh, hopefully this can. This is obviously helping a lot of young guys out. So this is why I do what I do, and I'm glad I. I'm glad it really does help. I'll try to keep this short and to the point. I met my first serious girlfriend, Trish, when I was my first year of college. I made all the mistakes. I put her knees before mine. I put her on a pedestal. I dropped plans to spend time with her. Basically, I made her the center of my world. So so much so that my grades started to suffer. Smack, smack for all that. Center of the world. Uh, making, letting your grade suffer for her, uh, her needs before yours. Classic nice guy behavior. Notice the guys that they go for, they chase after the bad boys, don't do any of that, right? And I know you know this, but I had to make the point. When I look back at my younger self, I wish there was a time machine so I can go back and smack the shit out of my younger self. Get in line, bro. When you And when you're done with that time machine, you can give it to me and I can go back in time and smack the shit out of my younger self because I did... So many of these things back then too, because I didn't know. But I learned from my mistakes the hard way, just like most, like this guy here. And now I can share with the younger crowd, help them out. So if there's a silver line to the bullshit I dealt with, that's it. Uh, long story short, we dated for 11 months and I thought she was in love with me. It turns out that she was only in love with what I was doing for her. It also turned out that she was in love with three other guys we were that were doing it for her too. She had four dudes in her rotation. What a surprise. And notice, guys, when guys date multiple women, then we're, then we're a-holes. Notice that? But it's acceptable if she had four different dudes that she was getting something from. But when we do it, right, we're the bad guys. You, you all know, you've all heard this. It also turned out that she was in love with uh, the th what, what the three guys were doing for her. When I found out that I was a member of a quartet, I broke up with her, and as weak as it makes makes me feel to admit, I was destroyed. I was too young to be wrapped up in the crazy ideas I was going to spend the rest of my life with her. Writing this out today and thinking about it, it's hard to reconcile my past with who I am today. Anyway, I was pretty messed up after breaking up with her, and I checked out of relationships. I was 19. Dude, there's no shame. Okay, you thought you were in love with her. You were young. You didn't know. And she completely betrayed you. You had no idea. You were blindsided. So there's no shame in that. However, if you kept making the same mistakes, then that'd be a different ballgame. We are all human, you know. Uh, for the remainder of my time in college, I put my entire focus on my studies and working out. Good, brother. You were on your grind. That's not to say that I wasn't having fun in college and there was plenty of fun to be had. So for the following three years, I busted my ass with my courses and got in the best physical shape of my life, and I had a great social life. By the time I graduated with honors and a degree in engineering, I left college with two educations, one in my career 
and one on women. He says, guys, if you meet a nice girl, and he has nice girls in quotations, that has a college education, you haven't met a nice girl. The things I saw and did with some of these women while in school will make a P-O-R-N star blush. If you had a woman that was trying to convince me that her body count was under 50 and she spent four years in college, the rule of multiplying by three is more than likely undercounting by a large margin. I did run into and through Trish a few more times while I was in school, but after seeing how these women treated relationships, I would never take a woman that went to college as wife material under any circumstances. And by the way, guys, this is, he's 34. So give or take, he got out of college 10, 11, 12, 13 years ago, depending if he went on for a master's. It's worse now. You young guys all know this. Uh, fast forward to the present day. I'm 34 and happily single. My career is going great and I've done really well with my investments. I'm living a comfortable life. I have a nice house and all the toys that make me happy to include a nice 24-foot boat, dirt bikes, a jet ski, and an entertainment system in my house that makes me very happy. I've got a nice circle of friends that come over for pool parties a few times a month. In short, my life is better than I ever imagined it would be. I never got any more serious relationships, and after seeing some of your content, I can't think of one single reason to disrupt my life at this point. Why would you? You're on top of the freaking world, man. You got money. You got comfort, you got friends, you got all the cool toys, you got all this wisdom at, at 19 years old. You'd be out of your damn mind to change that. What, what, so you, because the Hallmark movies got to tell you, you got to have somebody to feel uh, complete in this world? Bullshit. I'm sure looking at your nice bank account and the, the balance of your Vanguard or Fidelity accounts to see your investments and your crypto wallet and all that and the toys you have and not having to worry about money, I'm sure that gives you all the comfort and feeling complete in this world. And focusing on your purpose and your grind. Uh, uh, the lessons I learned from my time with Trish was to not put women first in my life. They are below my career, investments, hobbies, and my dog. I've been telling you guys since day one, they are at the bottom. Like I said, your purpose, your grind, that's first. Your health, the gym, all that, too. Your friends, the good family members, your dog, your cat, that's three. They're at the bottom. Because when you put them at the top, you get treated just like he did when he was younger. It sounds harsh. It goes against a lot of uh, the, the narrative that's out there. But when you do that, guys, and I know you guys that have been around the block know this, you end up like he, being treated like he was. But when you put them last and make them fight to get for your validation, to, to fight for your time, they won't leave you the hell alone. You're in the best possible place. But not all guys can do that. And a lot of them hate guys like me. They tell them they got to do that because it goes against their entire paradigm, their entire worldview. Anyhow, he says here, there's been one lady that I spent time with for the last two years, but it's never been anything serious. She likes to hang out and come over to party. We can call her Dawn. She's 30 years old, blonde, blue-eyed, and in great shape. I met her at the gym that I go to, and we started hanging out. But I told her from the beginning that I wasn't looking for anything serious. From the beginning, he says. Okay, made abundantly clear. Now, notice he said, "What? how old is she? 30. What number do women fear the most? 30. Why? Because in society or women's circles, 30, if she isn't, doesn't have a ring on her finger or doesn't at least have a guy that she's on the way to the altar with, therefore, she's a big, giant, fat loser because, God forbid, she's not getting married. And that's what they think. They fear that number because it's like, oh, shit, because they know they know that after 30, a lot of guys are like, uh -uh. they know their prime is the teens and 20s. So they got to lasso in a guy quick. So let's keep this in mind. Even though he told her, no relationships, nothing serious. <clears throat> she was okay with that. Sure. And loved to go and hang out and have fun. Honestly, I don't really know much about her life. And uh, when she's not around, and while it might, might sound rude, I don't really care. At best, she's a fun distraction. That's basically what our relationship has been. We spend time having fun together, but it's never been serious. For my life, it's been the perfect compromise. I'm not looking for a wife or even a serious girlfriend. I'm way too busy with my career and other interests, and women need too much attention for a relationship to work in my life. Don't get me wrong, I like Dawn. She's a lot of fun, and we enjoy our time together. So, this guy doesn't sound like a jerk. 
in my opinion. He's made abundantly clear to her from the beginning, nothing is coming from this. But remember, good looking women that uh, have guys always throwing themselves at them are not used to guys saying from the get-go, I'm not looking for anything serious. In their mind, ooh, challenge. Ooh, I can get him, right? Because all the other guys are just begging them to be their girlfriends or in some cases marry them. They think, ooh, challenge. I can change him. You know, that that's how it works. And watch what happens. It was last month when I had some friends over for a pool party and cookout when I learned a new lesson about women. The day was going great and my friends were all drinking, dancing, swimming, and generally having a good time. Dude, where do you live? Your your house your house sounds awesome. All these parties going on there. I was sitting on my deck with Dawn and her best friend Allie. Allie's a very pretty brunette and has spent time with with Allie's a pretty brunette that has spent time with a lot over the years, and I generally like her. Let's see about that. We all been drinking and relaxing when, out of the blue, Allie looked at me and asked me when I was going to propose to Dawn. Then we just hear a few minutes ago that he made abundantly clear they ain't getting married or relationship, and their relationship is casual, and he doesn't know jack shit about her because he really doesn't care. At first, I thought they were recording me to punk me or something, so I started laughing. When they didn't join in the laughter, my brain froze for a second. First, I had never done anything to let Dawn think we were more than friends. I was confused by why Allie would have asked me such a crazy question. Neither of the girls were smiling after I started laughing, and I apologized. Don't apologize. You didn't do anything wrong. I asked Allie why she thought I would propose to Dawn, and this is what she said. She says, well... You two have been dating for two years. She's in love with you. Don't you love her? Uh Uh-oh. Love? What the hell is she talking about? Dawn was watching me, and I asked her if that's how she felt. She said she was in love with me and wanted us to be together. A part of my mind was still trying to figure out if I was being pranked, and I asked her if she was serious. That didn't go over very well. I'm sure it didn't, and I'm sure the waterworks were quickly getting ready. It looked like she was about to start crying, and I hate when women cry. I was still confused about what was going on, but I can help hurt. But if I can help, not if I can help hurting someone's feelings, I will. I'm generally a nice guy. You are a nice guy. You're a good guy that's been red pilled. You put yourself first. You don't take any shit. End of story. And you understand the ugly side or the side of female nature. I told Don that I liked her a lot, but we didn't really know anything about each other. I asked her how she could possibly love me when she didn't even know she didn't even know me. Well, she's now 30 plus. You have all these fun assets, big house, pool, uh, you got money, you're comfortable. She knows this, right? So that comes first. That's the main attraction and your challenge. She argued and said that she knew me and wanted us to be a couple. I might have been a dick move, but I had no idea what she was talking about. Other than spending some fun time together doing activities or spending time intimate time together, I didn't really know much about her at all. As an example, I had no idea she even had any brothers or sisters. Those types of conversations never came up. We were just having fun. I told her I enjoyed spending time with her, but we didn't really know very much about each other. Certainly not enough to even think about getting married. Allie told me, so you've just been leading her on. Oh, now you're the bad guy. Again, you told her from day one, I'm not interested in relationships. I'm not interested in marriage. So how are you leading her on? But normally, nice guys would cave to this type of crap. Fortunately, our hero here has been red-pilled hard since he was 19 years old. And he ain't going to fall for this bullshit. That made me angry, and I never let anyone on. I never let her or anyone else on. I looked at Dawn and told her if she could answer my questions, I would consider starting a monogamous relationship with her, and she smiled. These are the questions I asked, and and these are things I I believe anyone that claims to love someone should know. Number one, what is my favorite color? She she guessed blue. I'm not sure why. My Porsche is red. My boat is red. My ski jet is red. Hell, I was wearing a red t-shirt. Number two, what is my middle name? She had no idea. 
Number three, what's my birth date? She tried to look at her phone, but I stopped her and made her guess about looking up the answer. She had no idea. And number four, do I have any siblings? I have an older brother and a younger brother. She had no idea. This reminds me of the scene in Monty Python and the Holy Grail with the bridge and that creepy old guy, and he asked some questions before the knights could cross over to the bridge, and if he answered wrong, he got, he got thrown into the freaking pit. This is a, What is your favorite color? Monty Python moment. She doesn't know any of this stuff, but she's so deeply in love with him, wants to be uh, married to him. Get the fuck out of here. I stopped with the questions at this point, and Allie said I wasn't being fair. Of course she said that. I told them both that the answers to those questions should have been child's play compared uh, to answer about someone they claimed to be in love with and start talking about getting engaged. I asked her why she wanted to be in a relationship with me, and she said that she loved all the fun we had together. Fun. What she benefits from. As soon as the words were out of my mouth, I had a flashback from college. Dawn was just like Triss. She loved the things I did for her, not me. For two years, she enjoyed the dinners, the parties, the trips, all the fun we had. But she had never been curious enough about me as a person to ask about the little details. I didn't mind, and it didn't hurt my feelings. I never asked her about those areas of her life either. We had fun, and that was it. Correct. Believe me, if women really, really like you, they're going to want to know every freaking thing about you, okay? Trust me. And you guys have been in relationships with women that really did like you at the time. You all know this. And any women watching this that are actually fans of the channel, correct. You like a guy, you want to know every damn thing about him. She doesn't know anything about this guy, but this guy has assets, he's got toys, and she could benefit from being with him. I reminded Dawn that I was clear when we first started spending time together I wasn't looking for anything serious and nothing had changed. I told her I liked her, but I had no plans of getting married to her or anyone else. Good, bro. I'm glad you stood firm. A lot of guys wouldn't. Dawn started crying, there's a fucking surprise, and ended up running into my house while Allie started yelling at me for wasting her friend's time. Okay, it is time for Allie to pack up her stuff and get the hell out of your house. This is your house. She's coming over there giving you a hard time. It's one thing to have a conversation, but now she's starting drama where you, where all your friends are having a good time. Now she's yelling at you. I'd say, take your purse and get the fuck off my property. I let her go for a few minutes and then I told her I was sorry if Dawn was hurt, but I made clear from the beginning, made clear from the beginning. She started to yell at me again when I asked her to leave and not come back. Yeah, get out or I'm going to call the police. That was the last time I saw Dawn or Allie and while I had no intention of hurting either of them, clearly I did. For that, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. It's not your fault. You made it abundantly clear from the beginning, brother. Not interested in that stuff. But she thought that she could, just like probably every other guy in her life, get him to cave because she's beautiful. Wrong. I hope she finds someone that can make her happy because she really is a good woman and deserves to be happy. Well, she ain't that good if she's putting on all this drama and bullshit. And she spent all those years with you and she wants you to marry her. But she didn't take the time to even know what your damn, if you have any siblings. You're at least honest. You don't care to know she has siblings or what her favorite color is, but she's claiming to be in love with you and want to enter the sacred uh, holy matrimony, but doesn't know any of those things. So she's not as good and great as you think. She sounds like your college girlfriend. You mentioned that. Anyway, that happened about a month ago and life goes on. I'm going to end here because I need to go get ready. I met this nice lady at the gym the other day and we're going to go out for drinks in a few hours. Well, you met your other girl at the gym, so be careful. Maybe your uh, old girl will see the new girl. And if this new girl is younger and prettier than the old girl, you're going to get some, she'll be staring daggers at you. Uh, even when you're completely open about your intentions, women don't listen. I guess she figured after some time I would fall in love with her. That's exactly what she figured. Anyway, I'm sure there are a lot of guys out there that will probably think I'm a dick, and maybe I am. But I'm happy I'm a happy dick and in complete control of my life. Cheers. No, brother, you are not that. And uh, I don't believe me, the vast majority of dudes that watch this channel and watch this video are not going to think that at all. You learned the hard way when you were 19 and that, you had your heart ripped out, but you learned. And then everything you observed in college and you have a great life. Why would you change any of that for anyone, let alone a chick that clearly wanted to marry you because of what you could do for her, what you could provide? Just the same way as your college girlfriend. So this shows, guys, that these things you learn will. We'll come back to help you down the road. And female nature doesn't change. 
just how male nature doesn't change. And also, he said cheers. So I'm assuming he's not in the United States. He's another part of the planet, right? Another side of the world. And so, female nature is female nature wherever you, wherever you are, and male nature. What they respond to, what we respond to, same thing. So, good story, bro. I'm glad you uh, held strong. Keep doing what you're doing, okay? Enjoying your life. Don't change it for anyone, okay? Only when you, yourself, want to make any kind of change, you do it. And that's up to you, but... Later on down the road, if you start to uh, meet some really, really amazing woman, at least who seems amazing to you, again, remember all the things you've learned. Very long screening process. And for God's sakes, if she doesn't know about your brothers and sisters and uh, what your favorite color and all other shit, then that tells you everything you need to know. So good story, man. And guys, perfect lesson. Things don't change. They don't change. This knowledge, what it does for you. And also listen to his bachelor life. He's loving it. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think. Oh, and by the way, brother, i got to say this. Uh, if she hasn't done already because it's been a month, she, you will hear from her again. It ain't over. You're going to hear from her again. She's a pretty girl, and sure, I'm sure she can find some nice guy because she's pretty. But I think you're going to hear from her at least one more time. And uh, if she does write back, if she does reach out to you, send me a quick email because i got to know. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.